نحمده و نصلی و نسلم علی رسول الكریم اما بعد فقال الله تبارک و تعالی فی کتاب الكریم فهو یقول و انکل علی خلق عظیم صدق اللہ العظیم و صدق رسول النبی الامین المختار الكریم و نحن على ذلك لمن الشاہدین و شاکرین و الحمد للہ رب العالمین انتہائی احترام و عقیدت اور محبت کے ساتھ آقائے نامدار مدنی تاجدار حضور رحمت عالم نور مجسم صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم کی مقدس بارگاہ میں اپنی غلامی کا ثبوت دیتے ہوئے درود پاک کا ہدیہ پیش کریں اور پڑھیں اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد معدن الجود والكرم وآله وصحبه وبارك وسلم صلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا حبيبي يا طبيبي يا رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليك وسلم بہت ہی بہترین انداز میں ایک شاعر حضور سرور عالم صلی اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ وسلم کی زندگی کا جو مشن تھا مقدس حیات طیبہ کا جو ایک سمجھ لیں ایم تھا اس مقصد کا ذکر کرتے ہوئے اور اس اچیومنٹ کا ذکر کرتے ہوئے شاعر کہتا ہے کہ خود نہ تھے جو راہ پر اوروں کے ہادی بن گئے خود نہ تھے جو راہ پر اوروں کے ہادی بن گئے کیا نظر تھی جس نے مردوں کو مسیحا کر دیا الحمد للہ اٹس دا ڈے آف جمعہ اینڈ ایوری جمعہ ایز اے مسلم وی وزٹ مسجد وی کم ٹو دی ہاؤس آف اللہ سبحان و تعالی اینڈ لسن لسن ٹو دی امام سم آف دی ایڈوائز سم آف دی teachings of Islam. The purpose of these speeches and the delivering that you listen on the Juma, the purpose is simple that we listen to it, we try and understand, comprehend it, process it and implement it in our life. Juma ki jo تقریریں ہوتی ہیں یہ ایک سمجھ لیں کہ صرف ٹریڈیشنل تقریر نہیں ہونی چاہیے نہ ہی سننے والوں کو یہ سمجھ کے سننا چاہیے کہ بھائی جمعہ ہے تقریر ہوتی ہے ہمیں سننی ہے مقصد یہ ہونا چاہیے کہ جو کچھ بھی بیان ہو اللہ و رسول کی جو تعلیمات ہم یہاں سے سنیں ان تعلیمات پر اپنے آپ کو رکھیں پرکھیں اور اس کے اوپر عمل کرنے کی کوشش کریں دس از دا پرپز دیٹ وی لسن وی انڈرسٹینڈ اینڈ وی ٹرائی اینڈ ایکٹ اپون دی تعلیمات اینڈ دی ٹیچنگز آف رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم واٹ ہیو مینشن دی آئی وچ ہیو مینشن آف دی خطبہ اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ ہیز پریزڈ رسول اللہ صلی اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ وسلم ان دی بیسٹ پاسبل وے بیکاز دا نیم آف پروفٹ از محمد دا ون ہو از بین پریز دی موسٹ ناؤ ہاؤ ڈیڈ پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم بیکم دی موسٹ پریزڈ ون وی ہیو فیمس پیپل ان آور پاسٹ پریزنٹ دیر ول بی فیمس پیپل ان دی فیوچر We have very well-known people who even today people talk about their qualities, characteristics, the attributes that they possessed. We still talk about them. What is the reason that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is the most praised one? 
One of the reason is that the one who praises Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he is none other than our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa taala. That's the reason Allah chose Muhammad, this name for our beloved Rasul sallallahu taala alaihi wasallam. Ke dunya mein, tarikh mein, jahan se dunya shuru hui aur jahan pe khatm hogi, puri kainat mein. سب سے زیادہ اگر کسی کی تعریف سب سے زیادہ اگر کسی کی مدح سب سے زیادہ اگر کسی کی پریز ہوئی ہے اور ہوگی تو وہ ہے ہمارے آقا محمد مصطفیٰ صلی اللہ تعالیٰ وسلم کی ذات بابرکت دیر از نو ون ادر دین پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ان ہیومن بینگ ہو از پریز مور دین رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اللہ سبحان و تعالیٰ ان دس آیا ہی از پریزنگ ایز ویل ایز گیونگ از دی idea of how to live your life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, uh, before I translate, I would like to translate the couplet I mentioned. The poet says that, خُدْ نَتَيْجُ رَاحَ پَرْ اَوْرَوْن کے حَادِ بَنْ گَئِ In the time of Prophet sallallahu at the time of his bi'asat and announcement of prophethood, the people around him which later became Sahaba, those people, they were on the wrong path. Majority of them, they used to worship idols. Majority of them, they were morally corrupted. And there were many who used to abuse their power. There were many people who used to bury their daughters alive because to have the daughter it was a kind of bad luck because daughters they would not carry the nasab further lineage would be from the son not from the daughter at that time rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam came and what did he do khud nateju rahper those people who were on the wrong path who were astray prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam turned them into that these Sahaba Oron ke Hadi ban gaye. They become the ideal for the rest of the world. That at the time when Prophet ﷺ arrived, these people were on the wrong path. By the time they attached themselves with Rasulullah, ﷺ, they became the ideals for people like you and I. Or Pir Shair Keta hai ke Allah Allah, kya nazar thi jisne murdon ko masiha kar diya. That was the sight of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. That any Sahabi, he looked at Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He accepted the message of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. What did they become? What did they become? That before Islam, they were dead. Before the arrival of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, they were dead. But then they became those who gave life to others. Look at the hadith of our beloved. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam says that ashabi kan nujum my sahaba they are like stars those sahaba they became sahabi with the attachment that they had with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam ashabi kan nujum fa bi ayyihim iqtadaytum yahtadaytum whichever of my sahabi you will follow then you will be on the guidance ke mere sahaba sitaron ki tarah hai جس صحابی کا بھی تم اتباع کرو گے ان کی پیروی کرو گے تم ہدایت پا جاؤ گے دا مورل آف دی دس انٹائر ڈسکرپشن دیٹ آئی مینشن از دا کیریکٹر آف رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم واز سچ دی اخلاق اینڈ دی خلق آف رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم دے ور سچ دیٹ دے چینج دی لائفس آف ملینس آف پیپل They change and turn the lives of those who are wrong to the right path. People who used to receive the guidance, they became the guide for the rest of the humanity. This was the akhlaq and character of Prophet ﷺ. Many times it does come in our mind that there are people who are namazi, punctual five times attendees of masjid. We have seen people with big beards and jubbas and everything. And we, when we look at them, 
we see them as they are pious religious people. The question does come in our mind that only performing these physical rituals that we namaz, we pray, we pray, we Ramzan ka month, we pray, we pray, we charity we pray, 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 we can imagine from here that the same people who called Rasulullah sallallahu majnoon, ma'azallah, they called Prophet sallallahu crazy and insane, the kuffar of Makkah. And those very same people, they used to call Prophet sallallahu as sadiq al wa'ad al amin that he is the most truthful person, fulfills the promises. Okay, they did not mention the ibadat of Prophet ﷺ. They did not mention that he praises a lot, he does a lot of zikr. They mentioned the conduct and his day-to-day -day connection with people and how he dealt with them. This alone guides us that being a namazi, observing fasts, performing tilawat and zikr is not only the life of Muslim and the Islamic teachings. It's part of it, yes. It is obligatory to perform salah and do fast and all of these rituals. It's part of Islam. But the huge part of Islam that we understand from the life of Rasulullah is how do we conduct and how do we present ourselves in front of people, in front of our family. This is what the akhlaq mean. It, it is such a huge topic that we'll have to continue for, inshallah, a few juma in the light of the characteristic and the akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And we'll try and write ourselves that how can we make ourselves and turn ourselves into a better Muslim. And people know when they, when they go for, for the interviews and stuff, the question is asked to them that what is your weaknesses? Okay, and one of the moral of the interview is there is no such thing as you say that I have no weakness. Everybody has some sort of weakness. Weakness. As a Muslim, and when we live our life, day-to-day -day life, we have certain weaknesses. And there is always a room to improve ourselves. And this is what we are going to do in today and few Jumas. Inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions about the akhlaq and the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he says that وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And before this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refuted what the kuffar of Makkah used to address Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as that kuffar of Makkah, piyare nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ko ma'azallah paagal kehte te jab wo sunte te ke muhammad ek hi aisa banda hai جو یہ کہتا ہے کہ اللہ ایک ہے کسی دوسرے کی عبادت نہ کرو تو ان کو یہ بڑا ہی عجیب لگتا تھا کہ ہم زمانے سے ہمارے باپ دادا یہ سارے ہزاروں معبودوں کی عبادت کرتے آئے ہیں آج یہ تنہا کہہ رہا ہے کہ یہ سارے جھوٹے ہیں تو اپنے لوجک کے مطابق ان کو معاذ اللہ پاگل کہتے تھے لیکن اللہ تبارک و تعالی نے اپنے حبیب کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کا دفاع کرتے ہوئے فرمایا with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are not insane my beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah reassured Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that those people they call you whatever but I call you my beloved Habib Allahu Akbar and then to reassure people Around Prophet Sallallahu Allah Ta'ala said, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقِنَ عَظِيمٌ Undoubtedly, you possess excellent manners. As I mentioned before that, why our Prophet's name is Muhammad? Because he is the most praised personality. And why did Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala praise Prophet Sallallahu so much? 
Remember, the name of our beloved Habib in the skies and in the Samawat is Ahmad. What does Ahmad mean? The one who praises the most. Now, how did Prophet ﷺ become the most praising one? Because in the entire mankind and human being history, there is only one personality who praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most. And that is our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa and that is how he gained the name Ahmad. And then when he arrived in this dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named him Muhammad, telling us that he is the one who is the most praised on the entire human history on the earth. Allah ta'ala apne habib ki yaha tarif bayan kar raha ki agar kisi ki akhlaq sab se achche hai if there is anyone in the entire world that person is none other than my beloved habib sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam. Now in many other ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another place he says laqad kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatun hasana. If you want to find the best ideal for yourself if you want to choose someone to read his life and obey, then it is none other than Fi Rasulillah. In the life of Rasulullah sallallahu you'll find that character. So Quran with praising his akhlaq and his morals, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanding us to follow and obey the life and the character and the akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala wasallam. And one of the occasion that which we learnt about it in Ramadan, I believe. Rasulullah sallallahu when the first wahi arrived. So today I will focus on the importance of akhlaq. That being namazi, being haji, being uh, sa'im, it's all some of the good actions and some of the fulfilling the obligatory prayers aspects. But Akhlaq with the namaz, that's what completes our life. Morals, that's what completes our life. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he came to Bibi Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha after that first wahi came, Iqra, bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa came to Bibi Khadija and he expressed his uh, anxiousness and his fear. What did Bibi Khadija tell Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa even though Rasulullah was in the cave of Hira, he was worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for days. He was praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doing zikr and indulging himself into remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet, she reminded Rasulullah of what? When Prophet said, I'm afraid. Then Bibi Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that don't worry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to protect you. Why? She said, Innaka latasilu rahma. Because you are the one who connects the ties. And then she reminded of Prophet ﷺ of some of the akhlaq and some of the best character that Prophet ﷺ had and he possessed. She said, You are the one who helps the needy. And in that hadith, there is nowhere we can find the ibadat. Because to have the good akhlaq and to have the good character in itself is an ibadat. For example, one of the very famous story in regards to how do we look at the akhlaq and the ibadat. There was a uh, woman and she was of a very bad character. And one day she was passing by a well. She needed water, she was thirsty. When, when she reached to the well, next to the well there was a dog. The dog was very thirsty. His tongue was out because of the thirst and the throat was dry. That woman, what does she do? There was no rope, there was no uh, bucket to take the water out of the well. She used her shoes and her scarf to take the water out and she helped that dog. When she died, the awliya and the saints of that time, they saw her that she was forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she was in Jannah. 
by all means, I am not discouraging anyone from, from performing the namaz and the rule. That's obligatory. The question will be asked to each and everyone about those faraiz. Ke faraiz se chutkara nahi hai. Lekin banda faraiz karta rahe, apne akhlaq ko na samare. Banda Allah ka zikr karta rahe, lekin logon se bad suluki kare. Banda puri dunia ke samne apni achhaiyon ke liye mashhoor ho, lekin apne ghar ki aurton ke saath uska suluk achha na ho. Banda apne doston ke saath har kism ki rawadari rakhe, lekin apne walidain ke saath uska achha suluk na ho, to phir wo namazein kis kam ki? The question is simple, that you may be observing all the obligatory prayers and everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks to do in terms of physical ibadat. But with that, if you are lack in good character, your conduct with your friends is really good. But when it comes to your parents, then your conduct is really worse. You do not even stand with them to talk to them. You do not even ask them for the help. And when you get the call or message from your friends, you are there for them. Now tell me, your namaz, your ibadat, your zikr, is this going to help you when you are disregarding all those ties which are the most important? This is what I'm trying to explain. That with the ibadat, akhlaq and the character is the most important aspect of our life. It doesn't come in one day. The habits, they do not change in one day, one by one. Gradually, we can act upon that. Look, Allah ke Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ke akhlaq kya thai? Hrat Sayyidah Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha ke paas ek sahabi hazir hote hain. Arz karte hain ke Sayyidah Aisha, Ummul Mu'mineen, hume Allah ke Rasul ke akhlaq ke baare mein batayin. Aaj hum Quran padhte hain. قرآن کی تلاوت کرتے ہیں قرآن کی تلاوت تک ہی ہمارا معاملہ محدود رہتا ہے that today we recite Quran and our limit is until the recitation پڑھنے تک ہمارا معاملہ رہتا ہے اللہ کی رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی اخلاق کے حوالے سے جب سوال کیا گیا تو سید عائشہ فرماتی ہیں کہ تم نے قرآن نہیں پڑھا a sahabi, he came to Sayyid Aisha, Ummul Mu'mineen, Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha. And he wanted to know about the akhlaq, the character, and the morals of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And the answer was given to him by Sayyid Aisha, Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha. Have you not recited Qur'an? And then she replied, Kana khuluquhul Qur'an. That the akhlaq, and the way of life of Rasulullah was Al-Qur'an. Exactly according to and like the Holy Qur'an, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do we understand from this? That Qur'an is not only to recite. And that's it. Wabas. No. quran e is actually the book that we have to read, understand and obey. And if you want to understand that, it will be difficult for each individual to open the Quran, read the translation, and act upon. Look at the life of Rasulullah. Sayyid Aisha Siddiqa explained it in a beautiful manner. Quran. That you want to know what Quran tells you and how to live your life. Look at the life of Rasulullah. That's in other words. We understand that. Look at the life of Prophet, act upon it, and that's what Quran is. How, how beautifully she mentioned in front of that Sahabi. Now, Rasulullah he mentioned in several occasions about the importance of akhlaq, importance of a person being a good Muslim in his day-to-day -to -day life, in his conduct. Rasulullah he mentioned that on the day of Qiyamah, the heaviest thing on the scale, and we have to remember that as a Muslim, we believe in the resurrection. On the day of Qiyamah, we will be questioned about each and every single moment that we have spent, each and every single penny that we have spent, how we lived and how we led our life days and nights. On that day, the heaviest thing on the scale, on Mizan, would be khuluqun hasan, akhlaq hasana. The person who possesses the great character, 
and the good morals, that character will be heaviest on the scale when he will be asked question on the day of Qiyamah. Now it's up to us that how do we, how, how, are, how do we want to live our life? As a good Muslim or as someone who fulfills the obligation and disregards the character. So character is the most important thing according to the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And another hadith I'll mention. Allah ke Rasul farmate hain ke qiyamat ke din sab se zyada qareeb mujh se wo shaks hooga ke jis ke akhlaq achche honge. On the day of qiyamah, a person who had the best character in this dunya, he will be closest to me on the day of qiyamah. Allah ke Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ke sab se zyada qareeb qiyamat ke din ke jis din har banda apni nafs ke mutalik apni jaan ke mutalik sochta hoga everyone will be worried about themselves to get to close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam get close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is one of the best honor to have on the day of qiyamah and to achieve that we have to attain good character good character kya hai Beginning, uh, beginning with the, the first habit that Rasulullah sallallahu he presented and people observed in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu it was sachai, the truthfulness. For the whole life, Rasulullah sallallahu he obtained this title of sadiq. Not only people who believed in Islam, not only those who were Around Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they call him Sadiq. Even the enemies, they remembered Rasulullah sallallahu as a Sadiq. This is one of the great characteristics. Now, what is the benefit of it? Now, to be Sadiq is not always easy. To be truthful is not always easy when we look into our life practically. That every day, how many times in front of our friends, in front of our colleagues, in front of our parents, in front of our spouses. How many times do we lie? How many times do we not tell the truth? Not telling the truth is to tell a lie as well. Now to, to have and obtain this character of being a sadiq, it is very difficult. But if, the pers- if a person tries, he will do it. And the benefit, if you look at this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I'll conclude on this uh, very beautiful hadith. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned that Satchai neki ka rasta hai. That truthfulness is a path of goodness. Ke banda jab sach bolta hai, to wo satchai ke raste par chalne lagta hai. And then Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that he stays on that truthfulness until in the law, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is written a sadiq. That when you obtain this habit, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows you as a sadiq. And then this will lead, Prophet says, this will lead him to Jannah. So, yaad rakhe, ke sirf namazen aur ye physical ibadat, yehi jannat ka rasta nahi hai. Ye to faraiz mein se hai, inko karna hai. لیکن ان کے ساتھ سچائی کو اپنانا یہ ہمارے جنت کے راستے کو آسان کر دیتا ہے The path to Jannah is not that easy that pray kalima and enter in Jannah We have obligations We have moral duties and we have to fulfill those duties in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in order to gain the place and maqam in Jannah And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa showed us with one characteristic, satchai, the truthfulness. A person, if he obsta- obtains this, on the opposite side, Allah ki Rasul irshad farmate hain, ke jood, ye jood jo hai, wo burai ka rasta hai. When a person tells a lie, that's the path of evil. And that path leads to jahannam. That today we may think it's only a small lie. But Prophet says that do not commit any sin thinking it's small. And do not leave any goodness thinking it's small. On the day of Qiyamah, those small sins or those small good deeds, 
دے ول کم ایز ماؤنٹین کہ بندہ ستر سال اگر جیا ہے ستر سال میں اگر اس نے بالغ ہونے کے بعد کتنی مرتبہ چھوٹے چھوٹے گناہ کیے اگر ان کا حساب وہ لگائے تو ایک پہاڑ بن جائے اسی طریقے سے اگر چھوٹی چھوٹی نیکیاں اس نے کی ہیں دوز اول دو اسمال ڈیٹس دیٹ وی مے ہیو ڈن نوئنگلی اور ان نوئنگلی آن دا ڈے آف قیام دو اسمال گڈ ڈیٹس ول بیکم دی ماؤنٹین دے کھڈ بی دا مین فار آور فار گیونس آن دا ڈے آف قیام تو اللہ کے رسول فرماتے ہیں کہ جھوٹ جو ہے تھیلنگ اے لائی دیٹ دا ینگسٹرز وین وی لیونگ ہاؤس دا یوتھ ہو those who are asked by parents where are you going we have hundreds of answer for our parents and any of them leads to the truth they know better to ma baap ko to hum convince kar sakte hain ki hum kahan ja rahe we can convince our parents where we are going but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the truth and this path of lying prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says it leads to jahannam It leads to the hellfire. So the conclusion from today's uh, few things which I have mentioned that akhlaq and moral and our personal character, it is very, very important in the life of a Muslim, in our life. And many of the problems we face in our life, mainly because of our character. If we try and change ourselves bit by bit, This will lead to goodness and goodness will lead to Jannah, inshallah. So this is the most important thing that I have given to you in front of you. That Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ki muqaddas zindagi akhlaq ke mutalik thi. Is zindagi ye paak ko padna ye humari joh hai musulman honne ke naate humari upar ye lazim hai. Is par amal karna bhi. Allah ta'ala hum sab ko is par amal ki tawfiq e rafiq ata farmai. Wa ma alayna illa al-balaq. Assalamu alaykum.